toothpicks, but they were fun to try. Big lesson about toothpick inking, never, ever, ever buy the colored toothpick. Because no. we sent Tom out for toothpicks the first time I did this, they and he bought they the colored just one. Dyed wood. Because I thought, oh, you know, I thought, oh, these will be great, they're kind of fun. But I realized something about the colored ones, they're covered in wax. Mm. So oh. the ink um, resisted. So I would have bought the colored ones too, so I couldn't blame Tom, because I'd have done the same thing. But um, the lesson I learned was, you know, you don't buy the colored ones because the wax resists the ink. So make sure you maybe you can open the box and make sure they're not waxy. Because if they're waxy, this isn't going to work. So let's start with the Girl, skewers, just waxy. to give you a point of um, yes. reference. Um, I hope this works, because sometimes when I'm doing a demo, I'm not in the mood and things don't work. But, um, you know, the principle is there. So, you know, the skewer can be used to do things like this. I'm not going to try to make a drawing yet. I'm just trying to show you what's possible with the skewer. You know, you can do this or, you know, look mm. at that great splatter. So violent. You know, and the great thing about the skewer, too, is you can break it in two different ways. You can break it slowly, like this, and that creates this sort of thready, kind of messy edge, which will give you, you know, one kind of line, or like that. And then you can also take a bigger skewer and snap it. It will give you a different kind of edge, and then you can... Uh, you can get that, um, we're going to look at Ralph Steadman in a minute, but this can give you that Ralph Steadman kind of line where you, there you go. Mm. So if you look at Ralph Steadman stuff, which we'll look at in the lecture here shortly, um, you can see that if you do that, you can get that Ralph Steadman like line, that sort of spattery line, that kind of violence, right? But you have to be willing to get dirty. So everyone kind of tries to get their hands dirty, and that's not going to work with toothpick inking. So, Let's see if I am capable at this hour in front of a camera in a class full of students of making something with a toothpick um, on the fly. So I'm just going to dip it in there and I'm just going to go at it. Um, I'm not really getting this paper. It's not working out very well for the toothpick. Um, let's pause that ink paper. And then I'll try that ink and see what happens. So, um, also sometimes I'm just, you know, not as on as I might be in the day. Oh, yeah, there we go. I don't Is know if it's the ink or the paper because yeah. we changed both. You don't um, get a controlled test. Right. You know, I don't have time for a controlled test. <laughs> so, you know, I've got a camera on me and. Uh, it's more on your hands. Yeah, it's more on the camera. Yeah. You can see already, you know, the possibilities with this. We've got this really cool rock in this sort of Asian art style. I'm generalizing because, you know, um, Japanese and Chinese, it had a lot of these same kind of lines in it. Um, beautiful stuff. Atmospheric, I think, back then. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, plus you can kind of get kind of loose. This stuff, the great thing about this is it kind of opens you up to being loose because when, once you're inking with a toothpick, um, you no longer have expectations that the drawing is going to work. And that kind of... Uh, <laughs> God, you're so right. You're allowed, yeah, to, right. You're allowed to fail, you know? And um, that's where the toothpick is so refreshing, is that there's a built-in expectation that this may not work out. Um, which is, for an artist who's always trying to do things right and get things to be really good, that really feels good. Um, I'm just splattering a little to put some texture, but... The splattering is kind of going all over the page, but you can see it caught up in there a little bit. Um, now what I'm trying to do is go in, so you've seen me using the side, now I'm using the tip. And I'm starting to get in some shadows. I want some shadows maybe behind this rock. I want to pull this rock into the foreground. So this drawing is very zen. I'm kind of pulling it out um, a little bit at a time. I'm fi kind of finding it as I go. And then maybe I want to put in some... Uh, blades of grass. Here's the other thing is after a while, the uh, end of the toothpick, look at this nice little curve, you know, tips end of it that it's doing automatically without my even having to do it. And it's giving me that nice grass look. Um, overlapping them and maybe putting a little bit of darkness in there. And then going over here and... Um,
really great. Yeah, this is actually really good because I'm trying to do this demo and make this happen at the same time. And it's, you know, it's, it's actually working. And usually it's not, there's no guarantee with this. Am I making this look ridiculously easy? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna start doing You're making that. it look ridiculously fun. Okay, well, that's even better. Um, <laughs> so, hopefully, it is ridiculously fun. And then, you know, here I might put in another rock. Um. Now, at this point, to be honest with you, uh, my light source is not really very well established. So I'm not, at this point, I'm not really worried about that. I'm really just experimenting with it. If this were going to be in like the Garo Hills animation or something like that, then I would be worried about the light source, right? But here, the light source seems to be in the middle of these two rocks, which is like physically impossible. <laughs> but um, for no. this purpose, it doesn't really matter. And then, so one of the things you learn is, for example, when I get a toothpick to this point, I might stop using that end right away if I want to do more detail and pick up a fresh toothpick, but I'll hold on to that for something that's thicker and heavier. So the toothpicks are never really blown. You can still use the ones like this for different purposes. And say if I want to go into the background now, I might pick a fresh toothpick so I can get finer lines. And um, Notice as I go back, I'm, you know, putting in less detail, although I'm still putting in some blades of grass because we're not in the deep space just yet. So I want there still to be some detail at this point, maybe not as heavy. Um, the lines got heavier there, but that's okay. That's part of the toothpick trick um, is you don't have total control over it. That's the beauty of this is you're giving up control. Um, put in a nice sort of Korean style mountain. I used to spend a lot of time up in the mountains with the Buddhist monks in South Korea. Um, that was amazing. It was really cool because we lived right in the middle of the city. And you'd walk up and in like five minutes from, ten minutes from your apartment, you're up in this amazing landscape mm -hmm. surrounded by Buddhist monks who were bringing you fruit and tea and you're sitting in this fantastic garden. And, um, really great stuff. Anyway. So this technique wouldn't be so good for characters, would it? Sure. Um, yeah. I've used it in, uh, even when I worked on the Department of Defense, one of my panels was too thick. The what? Mm -hmm. Department of Defense. The what? Defense. Yeah, I worked, we, were, we, we did a project for the Department of Defense. There's 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 I'm letting the lines get fainter and break more. And um, so that, that one's not too bad for being done on the fly, on the spot. So that's basically a toothpick method, but I want to urge you to try, you know, people get hung up on trying to make it with a point, but mm. you know, get your finger in there and push down on that. And then it'll give you these sort of Japanese painting lines that you really, that are very desirable with this. And this is um, one I did from a class before. So you can see that, you know, there are varying levels of success. And you can see with this how much the paper didn't matter. You saw mm -hmm. me struggle with that, not be able to get anything to happen. So um, paper matters, ink density matters. I don't know if it was ink density or paper that saved my ass this time, but it was one or the other. Uh, so that's the demo. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you.